Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we are going to talk about Linux Lite. They have a new release candidate out. This is 6.2 release candidate one. But when I looked at the website, I thought I saw the latest download was 6.0. So I don't know if 6.1 did a whole Windows 9 thing or... Maybe I missed something because I have not looked at Linux Lite for a little while, but whatever the case happens to be, we're going to look at Linux Lite 6.2 RC1. So for those not in the lingo, RC1 means that they are about ready to release this. They're doing one final release to see if anybody else finds any more bugs. Chances are they probably won't. Linux Lite has been one of the better lightweight Linux distributions for a while. If you are looking for something super lightweight to put on a computer, the ones I would look at, MX Linux, and I'd put that above the other ones because it's based on Debian and has a long, long track record. Number two would be Peppermint. It's based on Debian, but it just made this transition from Ubuntu to Debian. Uh, number three would be Linux Mint XFCE edition. Um, I'm steering slowly towards and away from the um, the Ubuntu versions because I think the Ubuntu package base is kind of introducing a few problematic things. And then number four, I'd probably place Linux Lite. And the reason I put Linux Mint above Linux Lite is the backend tools on Linux Mint are a little bit better than those you find on Lite. However, Lite does have a lot of really good tools to help you out. So get information about this and uh, make a donation to the project if, you, uh, if you're using it regularly over at linuxliteos.com. And uh, you can have a look over there and get all the information that you need. So it just uh, goes through and um, you know here you can, you can give in USD, you can give in EU. They have some information about their statistics. They have over three, 33 million downloads. And it's worth it because this is a really good build. A lot of hits per month, uh, a lot of social media followers. And what they really focus on is getting a really good system put together that is easy for people to use and familiar for people to use, but something that's going to run on nearly every computer. As we're recording this, a report just came out suggesting over 50% of computers on the market right now are not even capable of running Windows 11. So as your computer gets slower and slower because Windows 10 keeps on trying to force you to Windows 11, you have a bad experience. Rather than pushing up into a bad experience, what you should look at doing is using one of these Linux distributions instead. And Linux Lite is certainly one of those distributions I would look at. They have a lot of tools and resources and help and assistance. Uh, so you can flip through the various features to see the different uh, elements that they have. And uh, we're not going to go through all these pages. They're just highlighting a lot of the software, what you can do. Uh, if you do, are not confident in building an installation media, you can buy installation media from them. Um, of course, you can just download it and create it yourself. They have all the tips and tutorials and whatnot else. Now, the installer for this is just a standard, uh, easy to use installer. Uh, basics the same. You download it, verify your ISO, put it onto a USB drive or burn it onto a DVD drive if you still happen to have one of those floating around. Very easy to do on Windows, on Mac, whatever. You can do that. Make sure that your computer can boot off of a USB drive. Nearly every computer can, but you may need to turn that option on inside of your settings. This does support secure boot. So if you are uncomfortable with the secure boot options being turned off, you can still run Linux Lite on secure boot. Installation is quite easy. We can make a few different options, including uh, do we want um, uh, ext4 or ZFS um, the, for the file system. We can encrypt it if, we're, if we are choosing to use LVM uh, for the basic uh, file system. Very easy, very common settings that you will find in a variety of different Linux distributions. All right, with that, let's go ahead and jump on over to the computer and see what this guy looks like. So when you first get it booted up here, we land on our login screen. Let's go ahead and get logged in. 
And now we land over on the welcome screen. Now, the one thing I'm going to point out as a little issue, and I don't know if this is because it's an LC or a release candidate, or if this is just something that they need to look into, this is already installed and it has a button that says install now. And if we click this button that says install now, it just says loading, please wait. And it will probably sit here loading for a long time because we're not running in a live environment. And it looks like it's going to just fizzle away. All right, well, let's go ahead and bring that screen back up. That's called light welcome screen. All right, so from this light welcome screen, we do have some contributions things. So uh, we have code, we have donating shop, social media and feedback. If you have some support issues, you can check on over here. They have information on the secure boot. Uh, they have information on hardware databases. And then we have updates. Now, Linux Lite does have its own update system over here. And uh, when you click on this guy here, we have the preferences. And this is going to check on the cache refreshing. Um, I'm not sure why it's doing that, but okay, that's being really slow. Let's probably call that hopefully a artifact of the virtual machine. I really need, need to get rid of uh, virtual box and just use gnome boxes. It works, works a lot better. Uh, but anyway, um, it's you can tell it how frequently to refresh the cache. Do you want to do twice a day, daily, weekly, never? For me, I would either do weekly or never personally. Uh, but that is um, that is certainly something to keep in mind. If you have the use mobile connection, um, I'm it's not exactly clear what it is. Usually, uh, many of the updater systems, you will have an option that if you if you are on a mobile or a restricted network, you can cut it back, uh, checking for updates to save on bandwidth. I know I have bandwidth issues here, so that's why I like not things not checking for updates because what I do is I get to the end of the month I look at how much bandwidth I still have left on my system and if I have a lot of bandwidth left you know the day or two before my uh, data cycle resets I go ahead and do a push on all of my systems all at once that way I'm not using precious bandwidth at the time that I might actually run out but they do have an update tool here. We do have a driver tool. So uh, this is all going to be based on the Ubuntu driver systems. So this is actually the software and update application that ships with Ubuntu. And we can see here that uh, there's VMware adapter. Um, device is not working. I, that's weird because I'm not using VMware. I'm using VirtualBox. Uh, so... Uh, any proprietary drivers or anything else or hardware that needs a driver is going to be appearing in this system here. All right, we can do uh, select a restore point. This is running time shift. So you can go ahead and set this up. I personally don't bother with time shift myself. I just keep good backups of my data partitions and I just find that it's easier to simply refresh a new Linux build and dump my data back on it than it is to mess with time shift. That's a complete matter of personal preference. I think it's a great thing to have in Linux. It's just not something that I use. If you need alternative language support, you have that as an option as well. All right, so we have, there's a restall, there's that, and then we can select a light or a dark theme. Uh, so here's our dark theme is apparently installed. Here's our light theme is apparently installed. So you can kind of choose uh, which one you happen to want. Oops, actually installed. Is Google Chrome actually the web browser? Google Chrome is actually the web browser. Okay, that's immediate down um, uh, pushes this lower on my list of priority. Uh, having Google Chrome installed as a default browser. Eh, no, I'm not into that. Of course, they did it because they want to have a system as familiar uh, to people as they possibly can. Um, but at the same time, eh, there's better options. Here's your dark theme. Uh, I guess for the purpose of the video, we're going to keep it on light theme because I think it shows up better contrast on the screen for the purpose of doing the video. Now, the other things that we do have uh, inside of here is there is a software installer uh, that comes with uh, that comes with this. So um, when you look at software installers, there's two of them. We have Synaptic Package Manager and Synaptic Package, Ma Synaptic Package Manager, excuse me, is a good manager in that this has absolutely everything in the system to install. The downside is it's not as easy to sort and understand what you're looking for. I like it because I know how to use it, but it's not a particularly user-friendly 
uh, application for browsing for things like oh what other web browsers are there to to install you know in many of your your common package managers if you just search for something you'll get all the lists but uh, this may or may not actually show up anything um, that uh, uh, will actually show up well or it's going to give you a lot of weird dependencies and things like what is this I don't know idea what what's going on here um, so really there's ways to sort through it and find stuff like this. Here's uh, there's web servers, web uh, word processing. Let's just do this. But then you'll get a list of things in here that you don't know exactly what they all are. I like Synaptic Package Manager. It's just not the best for the new user. Learn how to use it is my advice. But Linux Lite does have a light software. It's not as robust as most other software installers is, but it does actually do a pretty good job of getting a lot of your major software. Now, this screen right here is indicative for why I like Linux Mint better than Linux Lite. There are a lot of good, useful tools in Linux Lite, but they all show up in these series of these small dialog boxes, whereas Linux Mint has a much smoother, um, a much smoother example, a uh, much smoother transition. So it installs an installer, and you see everything, and then you can choose what to install, and if it's already there, you can choose to remove it. This one, you have to choose remove or choose install, and then what it's going to do is it's going to give you not every piece of software out there. You can see this is really just a few pieces of software, but it does give us a lot of the common ones. There's Audacity, there's Dropbox, uh, the K word I can't mention on YouTube, uh, Microsoft Edge browser, we have OBS, we have KeePass XC, we have Play on Linux, uh, Spotify, Telegram, Zoom. So there's a lot of things on here that people might look for but as you can see there is very very few applications so this is one of the downsides of Linux Lite is they don't have an in-between software store that is really GUI based that allows you to search and browse um, it does have this for very common applications but you know basic things like Firefox are missing if you don't want to use Google Chrome so that's one of the the factors that that we have in here uh, let's go ahead and check what Linux kernel they are using. So you name dash R. So we are running Linux kernel 515 as the Linux kernel. So that's not too bad. And as far as our basic default applications that we have, uh, this is going to feel like a full operating system. We have things like tool uh, calculators, backups. We can search files. We have a font viewer, screen shares. We have USB image writers and formatters. Those are all good tools. We have GIMP and we have Paint. So Paint is like uh, Paint is one of the. It's very much like like uh, you know Windows Paint, much simpler than GIMP. We have a document scanner, photo manager. We have Thunderbird, uh, Google Chrome. Why? Why? Why would you do that to Linux? Uh, we have VLC, and we have just not every application in LibreOffice, but we have your basics. We have your word processor, your presentation, your spreadsheets, and your database manager. There's a few tools that are missing there, but that's okay. We have a P uh, PDF viewer as well. So as far as the applications, it has enough. It doesn't have too many. It doesn't have too few. It feels like a complete system, but at the same time, it doesn't overwhelm you with a lot of extra things. As far as where the unique set systems are inside of this is um, your basic uh, control panel. We have a series of Linux Lite tools in here. So a lot of these you're going to find, you know, panel and desktop and all these screen shaver. All these things are stuff that you find in XFCE. No big deal. Where we actually stand out a little bit is we have a lot of tools to do small system tweaking and they all have this light in front of them, not the light DMs. Notice the difference of the spelling but the light auto login. And this is where I said, you know, there's just a lot of these little boxes. You toggle on, toggle off. You click the auto login. So right now, auto login is disabled. I can enable it and it will allow me to automatically log in without having to input my password. And then you can disable the auto login as well. 
as far as the desktop. Uh, this one here, you can see that, again, it doesn't have toggle switches. It has enable, uh, so your computer, so this PC, your user files, your network, and your trash, and your control panel. You can enable, 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 or you can disable, 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 disable. So if I don't want the control panel on here, I can do this, and it will disappear from the desktop. I can still get to it right here in the... Uh, oh, not right there. I thought it was right there on XFCE. Uh, settings manager. There you go. Okay. I can get to it right there. It's my apologies. <laughs> I don't use uh, XFC as much as I probably should. Uh, light info. Uh, we can access that from a virtual machine. Here's your network shares. So if you want to do anything different with network shares, so this is going to hunt around for any network shares available and we can do some, uh, share settings and things like that. A nice little tool for that. This is the light software. We just looked at that one. Uh, so uh, let's sit, click no this time and you can install or remove software from there. The sounds, this will enable or disable the login system sounds, uh, main system sounds, volume launcher controls, uh, the sources. This is just going to pull up our uh, source, uh, the sources of our repositories. So right now we are in the United States, but you can choose very easily if you are in a different location, you can uh, use uh, different uh, repositories in there. We have a system report. Uh, we're not going to run it right now. Light tweaks. So these are extra fun tools. So if there's a problem with your boot up uh, and you can get to the screen, you can go ahead and uh, run your boot up. And you can see the grade over here. They have caution and they have safe boot up fix. Um, so this is going to restore the boot's flash screen. We have Chrome cache removes um, your Google Chrome cache. Uh, I, I would just remove the whole thing, but that's me. Uh, we have clear memory, default web browser. So this is going to set our default web browser. So it's going to look for it. And Google Chrome's the only one that's there. All right. We have uh, display disk usage, hibernate su suspense. You can turn these on or turn these off. And then you can, uh, there's a kernel installer. Let's go ahead and have a look at that one. Might be of use to some of you guys. So let's go ahead and update the list there. And in theory, this will allow us to change the kernel. So if we do not want to run uh, 5.15, we should be able to install some other ones based on what we have. So there's 3.13, Lord help us, uh, all the way up to 6.0. So you have a variety of different options. If you want to get on the edge and run experimental, you can go ahead and do that. If you have a lot newer hardware, this is a reason you'd want to do this. If you have a lot newer hardware, brand new hardware, but you really want to run Linux Lite, uh, changing to a newer kernel is going to help you do, to do that. All right. And we have, you know, there's just so many other things. Here's energy management, whisker menu management, uh, just a lot of extra tools inside of here. We have the upgrade. This is going to check if there's a an upgrade path to the latest release, but we're already on it. Here's a user manager. So we can choose our user and then from our user being selected, we can easily assign groups. We can change the password. We can add a new user. And there's the welcome screen, and this is the light widget, which will give us uh, information on the screen. So you can see right now uh, we are only running on 600 megabytes of RAM, which is really good. Uh, firewall is disabled. CPU usage is sitting at 1% and 2%. So you can see that uh, the system is very, uh, very good. We'll go ahead and keep that up there, see if anything happens. And then session and startup, this is going to give us a list of all the applications and things that are starting when we boot up and any extra things. Do you want GNOME services, KDE services, manage remote applications, and then we can uh, log out settings, prompt on log out. We can choose a variety of different options. So we have a lot of different uh, tools inside of Linux Lite to make it a really good system overall. So there is our brief tour of Linux Lite uh, 6.2 RC1. This should be out sometime soon. It is a very nice distribution. Definitely one that you should test out if you're looking for a distribution, particularly on an older or lower spec computer. This is going to give you a very smooth experience. And as uh, I'll reiterate the ones I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the other ones I look at also are MX Linux, Peppermint, and Linux Mint XFCE. Those are all, and this one, are all going to give you a really good 
experience. Long-term track record on each of those, although Peppermint's doing a little bit of a, of a uh, re reimagining itself right now, dropping the Ubuntu base, moving to Debian. So that's this makes uh, Peppermint and MX Linux both Debian-based, lightweight, and Linux light and Linux Mint XFCE being Ubuntu based light distributions with that thanks for watching everybody and we will see you next time thank you for watching this video from switched to linux this channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now you can be a supporter at patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com i also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.